Hi everybody, Physics Ninja. Today what I want to do is look at a problem of a rope sliding off a frictionless table. Uh, so here's the initial setup. We have a rope that has a length uh, equals to L. A little bit is hanging off the table. I have denoted it by the distance A. The rest of the rope is uh, just sitting on the table at rest. What I want to do is if I let this system go, uh, from an initial velocity equals to zero, well, it's going to speed up because there is a force of gravity acting on that section of rope A hanging off the table. Uh, so it's going to speed up, it's going to accelerate. Uh, the question is, how do I find the speed of the rope once it's completely off the table and then in free fall? So what is that speed uh, once the rope is fully off the table? All right, like with all my videos, if you like it, uh, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Okay, let's get started. All right, so we start with uh, just some uh, basic definitions here. So we have B on the table, A hanging off, and L is the total length, right? So we can automatically write that the length of the rope has to be A plus B, right? That is fixed. Uh, we're also going to assume here that the rope is constant density everywhere. So the constant density means that I'll just write that as the letter lambda, and that is the total mass of the rope divided by the total length, okay? And that is also a constant. So uh, let's imagine here this section here hanging off the rope. I'll also define kind of the height. Let's just assume that we said zero on the ground. So that means initially I'm some height above the ground, right? So the section B of rope is at a height H. The section A of rope, well, it's kind of, you know, a little bit is <laughs> over here, a little bit is a lot lower. So we'll have to consider that um, height for this section of A in just a minute. Okay, uh, how would you just initially write what the mass of the section A is, right? What about the mass? So mass hanging. Uh, mass of A and mass of B. So here I can write this as mass of A. Well, it's simply going to be that linear density multiplied by the length A. And the mass of B, again, is going to be that linear density multiplied by B. Okay, what I want to do now is since uh, it's frictionless, I can write down conservation of energy for the system. Okay, so the total energy is simply going to be uh, the initial kinetic, which is zero, uh, plus the initial gravitational potential energy of the system must be equal to K final plus the final gravitational potential energy once the rope is all the way over here. Okay, so let's uh, simplify this. That means, uh, like I said, my initial kinetic energy is zero because it's starting from rest. So let's l first look at the initial gravitational potential energy, right? First, this is the initial position right here, right? We have mass B, which is at a certain height H. So it's gravitational potential energy. So let me just write here, this is for the system, right? So we're gonna have mass B and MGH. Okay, that should be the gravitational potential energy of the segment that is horizontal. Now, how do we deal with the section that is vertical like this? Okay, well, what is the height of the center of mass of that section? Again, the center of mass is located right at the midpoint of this section, right? So its height, this is really what the height of section A is, right? For the center of mass of that section. So the way that I would write this now would be something like this. So it would be plus, so what's the mass of A multiplied by G, and what is the height HA? So you should be able to convince yourself that HA I can write as H and minus half of A. So one half of A. All right, uh, that's good. Now what about the final? Okay, so the final uh, kinetic energy and the final gravitational potential energy. Well, the final gravitational potential energy is probably pretty straightforward, right? Because again, we're looking at the center of mass of the entire rope. So let me go ahead and just write down this term. Okay, so it's gonna be the total mass of the rope, so that's capital M, uh, multiplied by little g, and now what is the height now of this center of mass? Now you gotta be a little bit careful the way I drew it. Uh, but again, if this is, uh, we're interested in this height right here. Okay. Um, and you should be able to convince yourself that here this should be H minus L over two. Okay. It's kind of the same approach as what we used for the gravitational potential energy of this section A, right? We're gonna have uh, H is the total height, and then we subtract uh, half the length of the rope in order to get this value. All right, and the final kinetic energy, well, that's also pretty straightforward. Again, if we have the entire rope that is kind of moving at the same speed, so it's simply one half uh, the total mass of the rope, 
and the velocity of the center of mass squared. Okay, and the entire rope is moving at the same speed. So now you gotta put everything together in our equation one right here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna have a mass B, GH plus MA, GH minus one half A. Uh, that must be equal to the capital M, uh, G, again, H minus L over two, and then plus my final kinetic energy and center of mass squared. Okay, so this is equation two. Let's go ahead and kind of just highlight this one. And all we have to do now is we need to do a little bit of algebra in order to simplify this equation. Okay, we're gonna wanna get the velocity of the center of mass. Uh, we're going to use this fact here. We have to kind of deal with these terms, but we've have them defined over here initially. So let's go ahead on the next page and continue some of this algebra to get to our final speed. All right, now one thing I didn't write initially, and I remember if we're considering the mass of each of these segments, we also have to have that our total mass must be equal to the mass of section A plus the mass of section B, right? That's a requirement. Um, now what we're gonna do here is I can group some of the terms together. So you either want to eliminate MB and MA or eliminate the total mass. Um, I'm gonna show you how to kind of do this system here. So one thing we can do right here starting from equation two is if I just distribute uh, this term over both of those, we can get a simplification because I have two terms here that I can group. I'm gonna have MB plus MA GH, right? You can see that's going to be from this first term. And I'm still left with this other term here, which is kind of one half MA multiplied by A multiplied by a little g. All right, and now we're going to have MG. Again, I'm going to distribute this term, MGH, like this minus MGL over two, and then plus one half velocity of the center of mass squared. All right, now again, I'm gonna use this simplification here because this here is the total mass of the rope. And you can see we have the exact same term on the other side. So right away, I should be able to cancel both of those terms out because they're equal to each other. All right, uh, next thing I could do is I could eliminate this guy. And again, I'm gonna bring this on the other side. So let's go ahead and do that step. If I bring this term on the other side, I get that the total mass, GL over two, and here I'm going to substitute in the uh, MA value. The MA is simply the linear density multiplied by the length. So that's going to introduce an A squared because I already had one there and multiplied by little g. And that should be equal to one half uh, the total mass uh, velocity of the center of mass squared. All right, we are getting close. Uh, let's do a couple other simplifications now. We notice that we have one halves everywhere. So let's just eliminate those. You can multiply by two, so simplify that. And one other step here, instead of writing lambda, what I'm going to do here is I'm just gonna substitute lambda by its definition. It's the total mass divided by the total length. All right, and now the other thing you could see is you have masses everywhere, right? We have that capital M in all of the terms, so you could also eliminate that. All right, and our final step now is we're going to get um, that the velocity of the center of mass, I'll factor out a G, and let me just write it like this. I'll also factor out an L. So the first term here simply becomes one. Now you gotta be careful with the second term here. We still have A squared left over. And we had an L in the denominator, but we're gonna have L squared over here. All right, and our last step then is simply taking the square root of both sides. And this is our expression for the velocity of the center of mass. All right, now we're gonna go on the next page and I wanna make sure that this expression at least physically makes sense. We can take a couple limits just to check this result. All right, it's always good to take a limit when you have a, an expression like this. So if you take the limit when A is very, very small, say compared to the length, so that means you only have a tiny little segment of rope here that is uh, hanging off the table. Our expression here kind of reduces to just square root of G over L, right? You can forget about this ratio here if A is really small. Well, does that make sense? Well, let's, let's imagine our rope here, which is initially kind of here on the table, and then in our final position, it's kind of where it was earlier. Well, how would you solve this problem? You'd say initially, well, the center of mass is mgh. That's how much gravitational potential energy you have in my initial state. And in my final state, I have a mix. I have some kinetic energy, 
And then I also still have some gravitational potential energy, right? And that is simply mg. This is h minus L over 2. All right, if you simplify this expression, you have mgh on this side. You have mg times h. Uh, that's going to simplify this term. Uh, at the end of the day, you can see that um, we're left over here from this expression right here. You can bring that on the other side. So you're going to have mg uh, L over 2 equals to 1 half uh, mv squared. Uh, the 1 halves here cancel out. Uh, the masses cancel out. At the end, look what you're left with here, that the velocity of the center of mass is square root of g multiplied by l. We get the same answer. So that makes sense, uh, at least physically, when we take that appropriate limit. Okay, I want to uh, talk about this problem now from the perspective of looking at the work done by the force of gravity, right? What if you were going to apply the work energy theorem to this problem? How would it look like? All right, if you wanted to solve this problem using work energy theorem, uh, let's go ahead and think about how we could do that. So work energy theorem. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, right? It says the work done must be equal to the change in kinetic energy, which is K final minus K initial. And we know for the problem that K initial is zero. <laughs> So this is already a big simplification. So my k final is one half the total mass. And everything is moving at this speed of the center of mass squared. So all we really need to do then is calculate, well, what is the work done in this problem? All right, and the only force acting on it is gravity. So how would you do the work done by gravity? Well, I think it's good to kind of consider maybe a little graph here. Now, what makes this problem a little bit harder is uh, let's plot force of gravity, and let's plot, say, versus this distance here, which I'm going to call y. So we start off in this position right here, right? When I'm in this position, there's a force of gravity acting on it. And, right, the force of gravity is what's producing this external force. I'm going to consider the work done by the force of gravity that's pulling down on this segment. Now, since the segment is dropping, it means that the force of gravity is not constant. Okay, the force of gravity actually on this section that is hanging starts off at some value. Oops, let's go ahead and put that back. So it starts off at some initial value, which I can calculate. And then at the end, while well, the force of gravity simply has to be equal to mg, right, at the end. So let's just write like final. Has to be mg. So that's kind of going to be up here. So this is going to be mg. But what is this initial value? Well, the initial value for the force of gravity, again, that is all that's doing the work. There's no friction anywhere here. So we have, what is the mass of this segment? The mass is lambda a and multiplied by little g. That is the force of gravity. And that term is smaller because uh, a is less than the length. And then what you have here is you have that as it's dropping, that distance a is getting bigger. Right? This is increasing, therefore our force of gravity is also increasing. And what it looks like is a trapezoid here. Now, once the total y distance equals to L, you're all done. So how do you calculate the work done by the force of gravity here if I have this type of shape? All right, again, if you consider what you learned in your class, you should have learned at some point that if the force is not constant, you can always calculate the work by finding the area under the curve. So how would you do that for this trapezoid? Okay, so the trapezoid area is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is just do one half this initial value plus the final value that represents um, kind of an average and multiplied by this uh, length over here. Again, remember we're starting not at zero length, we're starting at a length a. So that's also kind of an important point. So this is what the work looks like to me. It looks like it's lambda g multiplied by a. That's my initial point here. Uh, the final point is mg. And the width of that trapezoid is simply L minus a. All right, that is the total work done by gravity in this problem. This here must be equal to the change in kinetic energy, which we said was 1 half mv center of mass squared. All right, first thing we're going to do is eliminate these 1 half factors. And now what we have to do is multiply through everything, okay? Get four terms here. 
um, simplify this uh, left-hand side of the expression. So if we do that carefully here, it should look like this. Uh, lambda GA multiplied by L. Uh, what else? Plus MGL, that's uh, the next term, minus lambda G A squared. And minus MGA is the last term here. And that's simply equal to M V center of mass squared. All right, uh, next term. Well, let's simplify some of the terms here. Now, we should get rid of lambda. That'll make our life a little bit easier. So everywhere I have a lambda, I'm going to replace it by capital M over the length. Um, so you can see that these lengths here cancel out. Anyway, um, we could do that for the next term as well. This guy, oops. Let's get the eraser here. Let's get rid of this lambda. Let's replace that by capital M over L. All right, now we simplify some of the math. We have minus MGA. Here we have positive MGA. Get rid of that term. All right, we have two terms on the left-hand side. They have mass involved. This here also has mass. So I'm just going to simplify that. I'm running out of space, so i got to keep everything on the same page. Uh, next thing we do is we simply have to take the square root of this expression. You can see it's starting to look exactly like the other one, as I would expect it would. Factor out a GL. And what you get here at the end is a squared over l squared. Uh, take square root of that expression. And that is the velocity of the center of mass of uh, the string using the work energy theorem. Okay, so again, I think the, what makes this a little bit harder is that the force is not constant in this problem as this rope falls. It varies linearly as more and more rope is hanging off the edge of the table. All right, hopefully that gives you some insight on how to do some of these problems. Thanks for watching.